I'm going to start. I'm going to start. I'm going to start. I'm in the rocking chair, so it's time to start. Uh, good evening, everyone, or afternoon, or if you're in Hawaii. Uh, I hope your lunch was good. Uh, welcome to uh, the seventh of nine SAP admitted student panels that we've run through the month of April. Uh, this is a particularly one, this is one that's close to my heart and one that's very important to understand Boston College, and we'll get into it in a second. Uh, it is the 20th of April. Uh, there's 10 days left in the month. So if you're still on the fence about where Boston College fits in your plans, uh, we appreciate you attending these kind of events. Um, my name is Chris O'Brien. I'm your host, I'm Associate Director of Admissions. Uh, I'm also joined by some wonderful people in, in the Boston College community that uh, are here to talk specifically about uh, retreats and service and spirituality, talking about the mission and the culture of these things at Boston College, really pertinent to understanding how Boston College may be distinctive from other, from other schools, from other colleges that you may be looking at. Um, every school says they have a mission. It's about relating to the mission. And I think a school that has a spiritual mission, you know, isn't supposed to force you into thinking very monolithically about one way of believing or one value system. I, I think our job is to challenge what you come in with and give you some deep thought about it and provide an environment that will support, support your questioning and support the dialogue that you're gonna have with friends. Um, we talk a lot about Boston College about conversation partners. We love conversations and sometimes these DMCs, these deep meaningful conversations that we have are to spur uh, the challenging thoughts that we have about you know, today's societal issues or what it is that we're supposed to do to fulfill ourselves with our education and professional goals. That's all wrapped into a Jesuit Catholic education. Uh, so how does that exist on a campus? But we still want to have parties and we still want to have football and we still want to get to know the 9,000 other students at our school. So how can that mission coexist with all the other things that's supposed to happen in college? And what are the structures that allow those things to coexist? Can you make friends joining clubs that have a service component? Can you really have challenging uh, uh, conversations in the classroom that are theology classes and philosophy classes, not just directed towards one specific you know, social science subject. So that's what we're here to talk about tonight. Uh, and again, I have four great experts that have you know, had these conversations and have done these things since they've been at Boston College. And uh, I'm gonna uh, ask them a couple questions about these topics, about service, about retreats, about how the Jesuit uh, philosophy has manifested itself during their time here. Um, and then I'm going to entertain some questions from you guys, uh, which I'm going to be happy to help um, flush out what those resources and what these kind of questions you might have about Boston College's mission may work out. So with that, we're going to introduce ourselves. And um, to keep it easy for me, I like to go in alphabetical order by first name. So Christine, you'll go first. And here's what I'd like you to do is Say who you are and where you're from and, and what you study and what year you are. Uh, and then to finish your uh, introduction, I'd like you to say in one word, what does Jesuit mean to you? And give us a little 30 second uh, identifier of what that might mean. Uh, and then we'll go around and meet everybody else and then we'll ask you a few questions. So Christine, uh, I'm depending upon you to set the bar high. Let's get us started. Thanks, Chris. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Christine Lenahan. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm a sophomore in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences studying English and philosophy on the perspectives track. Uh, perspective is just like an interdisciplinary concentration within a philosophy major. Um, and as of three days ago, I'm also a women and gender studies minor, which is very exciting. Um, I'm from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Yes, like the office. Yes, like Joe Biden. We actually went to the same grade school. Um, obviously not at the same time. He lived a couple blocks away from me. Now he's in the White House. It's, and now I'm in Walsh Hall here at BC. So if you hear seven other roommates, that would, those would be my roommates bustling around in the background. Um, Jesuit to me uh, in one word means whole. Uh, and for my 30, 30 second little blip on that would be that we really foster an education that creates a whole person. You don't just get to hone in on one subject area. You do over the course of your four years, 
but we really through the core curriculum through our programs in uh retreats and through service create a person who goes out of boston college into the greater world to create the change that they've learned that can happen here on this campus that was perfect and 30 seconds well done Okay, now again, uh, going back to my alphabet knowledge, I think F comes next. So Franny, uh, let's hear a little bit about you. And again, your one word definition of Jesuit. Okay. Um, hi everyone, my name's Franny Hess. I am from the other side of Pennsylvania, closer to Philadelphia, Ivyland, Pennsylvania. Uh, I just graduated from BC last year and I loved BC so much they could not get me away that now I'm in grad school at BC studying social work and theology and ministry. And my one word for your question would be kind of like a two-parter, but action-oriented. So I think that BC Jesuits not only ask us to attend to the world around us and to the social issues that we're facing in our society and on campus today. We're also called to reflect on them, but even more so act on them and make a difference in our world and be very social justice oriented. I love it, Franny. And action oriented, I think if you hyphenate it, it qualifies as one word. I do too. I mean, you're the grad student, so you'd know, but I think if you, if you hyphenate it, it totally works. Thank you. <laughs> uh, all right. Grace, you're next with the same introduction and maybe a different word for Jesuit in your terms. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Grace Carlson. I am a junior. I'm studying finance and information systems in the Carroll School of Management, and I'm also pursuing a minor in theology from the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. I am from California, so a little bit outside of San Francisco. Um, it's finally starting to get warmer here, so I'm feeling a bit more at home, which is nice. Um, and for me, the word that would describe Jesuit would kind of be outside. I think a lot of discussions I've had regarding Jesuit values and throughout all of my classes and so many different subject areas have really probed us to think, okay, we're learning about this in the classroom. How can we bring it outside of this? How can we bring it not even just outside the classroom today, but outside of our four years at BC, thinking about how we're going to be ethical decision makers um, and starting from day one when we enter the workforce. Um, so yeah, outside would be my word. Perfect, Grace, thank you so much. Uh, and this is all a build up to you, uh, Naziha. So uh, let's hear from you. Who are you? Where are you from? What do you study? What year are you? And then I'd love to hear your one word for what you've seen and heard and been around as, as Jesuit. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, my name is Nazia Bugazi, and I'm a junior in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. I'm a political science major with a double minor in economics and Islamic civilization and societies. I'm from Needham, Mass, which is just about a town or two over from yeah, Chesson right Hills. over there. Yes. And so my word, one word for Jesuit um, is reflection. Uh, and that has to deal with, you know, what do you want the world like who does the world need you to be like wh what makes you happy and like who do you want to be which is just really thinking about to like to the ground level of like you know what do i want to like use my talents and my skills with and what i want to get out of my bc experience and be able to um just kind of be there as a part of a community not just for boston college but also beyond you know your bc experience and into the world and just kind of um you know really getting to the to the roots of you know what you want to kind of get out of life and things like that it's really important uh, value is just kind of reflecting upon um, just your place in the world and, and within BC's community. So that's been really helpful. Um, and, a, and a very nice like aspect of the Boston College experience is just reflecting upon these experiences. Great introductions. You did not let me down. Well done. So let me ask a couple questions just to get us started. And I'll start with you, Grace. So Grace, were you real service oriented in high school? And was it important to you to find a place that would be supportive uh, and have a culture around community service options, whether or not you're going to be a big part of them. Was that something that was important to you? Um, or was it kind of sneaky important to you? Maybe you didn't know it, but as you learned more about it, it seemed like a pretty nice culture to be around. T tell me a little bit about what it was like when you were looking and, and what you were looking for, uh, and especially when it came to something like service, something um, that was less about academics and more about fulfillment. I think it's a great question. I think in high school, I was definitely very involved in service and 
I think the word used was sneaky. I feel like that was probably an apt description of um, when I arrived at Boston College. It wasn't something I necessarily was looking for, but was really grateful to find here. Um, the culture of service is really strong. It's something that people are really involved in on campus, even though it's not required. It's something that people make their friends around through different service clubs. Um, I was fortunate enough to volunteer uh, in a group called Appalachia Volunteers Group, or just AFA as we call it on campus. And I did it my freshman year. And I was just so shocked at how many kids from all different grades were involved in it and how they were so excited about it. And it wasn't just something that they did because they were brought up doing that or they were used to doing that at school. Um, they were really excited to be involved. And I think this, this whole culture of service is really strong on campus. And it makes students who maybe didn't consider that or weren't strongly involved in service in high school want to get involved, which is awesome. And you get people who are bringing different perspectives to what service means to conversations about it. I think. Lizia, you mentioned reflection, like that's such a large part of service on campus where people not only do the action, but they think about what it means. And they think about the effects and what it means for them as a person and also the people they're serving. Uh, great answer. And, and I, I use sneaky because I think your experience is not alone. Like I think people couldn't put their, their, their finger on it and then they come here and they see it and they experience it and it sort of reinforces what it is that they're about too. Um, now, I, I like to think that I'm pretty smart in how I put together a panel. And Christine, like you come at it from a little bit of the opposite direction. Uh, you went to a Jesuit high school. So you were around the, not only the a culture of service, but literally this kind of culture of service. So when you came from Jesuit Catholic school to Jesuit Catholic University, um, I mean, were, were there differences? Uh, was it the same? Has it evolved and changed? And did you see a very similar or was it a different culture when it came to getting involved with and being a part of service? Yeah, Chris. So when I applied to BC, I knew that a Jesuit university was for me because I went to a Jesuit high school. So I'd been familiar with all of our Jesuit key phrases that we use, you know, cura personalis, a care of the whole person, um, magis, meaning more. Um, all those things where I had been kind of like engrossed in my high school culture, but I never really saw them at the level in action that I do at Boston College. So service in my high school was technically mandatory. You had to go on service trips um, as a part of like your requirement to graduate. Here at BC, you would think that it was the same way with the amount of service that students like partake in. I think it's over 80% of students will partake in service over the course of the four years here. And so it's different in the sense that it's not written into like the guidelines that you sign into like having to do service when you're a Boston College student but you're steeped in a culture that fosters a kind of community that wants to go out and do more. And it's again, part of that larger Jesuit mission of education that our education is kind of squandered and useless if it's contained within ourselves. So we don't bring what we know out to the margins to people who don't even get a chance to know what an education like this looks like. It's our responsibility to do so. And so I think that's kind of the change in the culture here at BC is that it's really a choice um, and that students do it like willingly and with a lot of gratitude as well for the ability to do so. Franny, do you remember when you went to the student involvement fair and you saw all these tables as far as the eye could see of all the clubs and organizations? And, you know, there's, you know, the, the, the radio station and there's the college Democrats. And I mean, did you remember how many of these organizations had either a religious component or a service aspect or there were retreats? I mean, was that something that was overwhelming? Was that something that struck you right away? Uh, when you were coming in here? Because remind me, did you go to public high school? Mm, no, I went to a Catholic high school. Well, well, so still, I mean, this was probably a lot more in your face than even it was at, at your run-of-the-mill Catholic high school. And I mean, do you remember what that was like? And did you get involved with it right away, I guess? Maybe that's the question I should ask. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're saying, even though I went to a Catholic high school, it was still, uh, I don't know if jarring is the word, but like, really cool to see how passionate people were about their service clubs. And those were the first things that I did notice those service clubs, those retreats through campus ministry. And for Boston, which is another service immersion program on campus was one of the very first clubs and organizations that I signed up for. And I was, you know, very much like Grace said, there that was where I met some of my very fir first friends. Um, for those out there who don't know what for Boston is, it's um, a service placement within the Boston area. So I went to an after-school program called uh, Sister 
or yeah, Sister Mary Hart, um, where I worked with children from like kindergarten through eighth grade on their homework in the after school program. Um, and it was just very groundbreaking me, for me to be a part of a club that had a lot of people that were very passionate about the same thing, but again, they didn't have to be there. Like I think in the high school, complete transparency, I loved community service work and also it was a resume builder, right? And so for everybody else too, not National Honor Society, like sign me up. But people in, in my experience in Fort Boston were there because they wanted to be there and they wanted to be involved in that almost enhanced service immersion education of going into the field, learning about the population that you're serving with and then continuously having conversations with your your friends and, and your peers too um, is something that I really appreciated during my time as an undergrad. Now I bring up the student involvement fair because we hope that new students or or you know students that want to get more involved, students that want to find the, the students that share their passions or share a cultural tradition, a religious tradition, can find their people. Now, Nazia, I know you're you transferred here. So it was imperative. You knew your people were out here. You knew you wanted to find those people. What were the ways that you found students that were like you, that shared your traditions, that shared some of your, your background? And uh, what kind of things under these conditions have you been able to do to, to keep with those people and continue to, to work with them? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so when I first got to BC again, I also went to the uh, fall involvement fair as well, which was really helpful for me. Um, to have the opportunity, it's kind of fun. All these tables are kind of like throwing flyers at you and trying to, you know, call you to these clubs. So one of them that I did see was uh, we have a lot of like different uh, faith clubs on campus, which is really nice that it kind of it applies to you know students of all different backgrounds. So for me, I mean, as a, as a Muslim, I went to the Muslim Student Association and I got to meet um, some you know students. That was really helpful to kind of you know meet students right away that were you know, belong to the same faith as I, um, you know, as me. So that way it's easier to. Um, kind of have my own community within the greater like Jesuit Catholic um, community that we have on Boston College's campus. So that was really nice to be able to, um, you know, meet some friends through there. And I've also kind of expanded my network through there. I've also participated within service opportunities within that particular club. For example, even during like the COVID year this year, uh, we were able to volunteer at a local mosque and um, put together some like snacks and like lunch packs for students. And they got delivered to different kind of kids around the area. So I got, they got delivered, um, which was really nice to be able to still take part in our community and also, you know, meet friends from, you know, the same background as me, which has been really helpful. And then even um, since then, uh, I just kind of been joining like different, you know, even like as a sophomore, you know, I didn't get uh, make as many friends as I'd hoped to because it was my first year. And it kind of got sh cut short by the time I was kind of really adjusted to BC. I wanted to go to more events and stuff. You know, COVID happened, but I, that didn't stop me in my junior year. And so I kind of, I actually signed up for even more clubs. I went to the, we had a virtual um, fair in the fall. So I signed up for the undergraduate government of Boston College, which is, you know, UGBC, which is our student government. And then I got to make a lot of friends through there and then ended up meeting them in person. And we'll do a lot of, that's more like an on-campus kind of service opportunity because you're doing like advocacy work so it's a different avenue of uh, representation that's been really helpful for me to find a lot of friends that are also really passionate about uh, making change on campus which has been really um, a nice home for me to find within the greater BC community so I've made the most out of that. Um, now the classic way to describe how service is integrated with learning at Boston College is Pulse. Now I'm not sure if any of you have taken Pulse. Have any of you taken Pulse? No. But I can always pick on the oldest student because he knows something about Pulse and can at least describe how it's supposed to work. So Franny, you've known a lot of people at BC. You were somewhat popular, um, and you probably had friends that did Pulse. Can you sort of explain just the just the bullet points of how Pulse works? Sure. Um, I I did have a few friends who were in Pulse and they absolutely loved it and so from my understanding is pulse usually is taken by sophomores perspectives more so freshmen and then you get to apply your sophomore year and it's a service immersion in that you get to go into the greater boston area and do a field placement um, in a sense and volunteer with the community out there one of my really good friends mark kylie who i graduated with last year um, he was very much involved in special olympics in his high school and he was able to kind of bring that experience uh, to his service immersion through Pulse. So I, I don't remember which placement he was at, but he was still able to work with um, people who had disabilities. 
And then there's a second component where you're in class with a professor and other classmates who are also volunteering throughout that week. And you get to engage in more social justice issues and topics. And I believe they integrate philosophy and theology into it as well. Um, that's where the academics come in. Um, but I imagine that it makes for a much more fruitful conversation to actually be in action oriented again, be in the field and working, but also having conversations back and integrating that academic work in there too. Right. I, I think I think uh, I'm not a Jesuit, although I've been educated by Jesuits, and and I I think there's there's a, a real um, powerful connection when you don't just learn concepts, but you can have contact with those concepts and service allows students to read, you know, Thomas More's Utopia about the perfect society and how things should work and, and then serve soup to the homeless for four, four, you know, four hours, and then come back in discussion with your peers and, and try to rectify the things that you've seen and the things that you've read and people's concepts of the perfect society. And I, I just think that that's where the Jesuits tend to do their best is yeah, it makes people uncomfortable to have to have these difficult conversations about these classics and literature. But you know, by by being uncomfortable, we learn the most. And I, I do think that you know, Pulse is a, a great way that our students can do that. And hundreds of students a year will take Pulse and have these great service uh, opportunities and make great friends, and also be part of great discussions in the classroom. Um, incidentally, someone in the in the Q and A asked about perspectives. Were any of you in perspectives? Uh, Christine. Could you just talk really briefly about um, your experience in perspectives? Um, it does have a theology, theology component, so it is in bounds in our conversation today, but just a, a quick overview of what perspectives was like. Yeah, of course. So perspectives is an inter interdisciplinary um, class that combines your philosophy and theology core. It's the full year. You take it both fall and spring semester. And it's really popular among first year students to knock out their philosophy and theology core. So you work with a lot of philosophical texts as well as text in theology from a philosophical, perspe philosophical perspective on them, which is really, really cool. I was a part of uh, a living learning community with perspectives. Um, I wanted to take one specific professor, Professor Carrie Cronin. She's a big figurehead here at BC, she gives a big talk at orientation. There's a whole documentary about her and her work. She like makes her students go on dates, uh, which is what she's like very famous for. But uh, and talks about like the philosophy of dating, which is is very fun to fun project to partake in. But I really wanted her, and I knew that going in freshman year. And so I was in a living learning community on Newton campus, um, where I lived among my classmates in the perspectives program. So we would have class on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then have Wednesday night discussion on Newton campus. Perfect, Chris, perfect, Christine, thanks. And, and just one real quick point, Grace, and you alluded to it when you did your introduction, but um, as a business student at a Jesuit Catholic school, there seems like there could be on the horizon conflicting uh, goals. Uh, you, you started to talk a little bit about ethics when you were talking about some of the things that uh, you describe as Jesuit. But if you can go in a little bit more, can, can, does BC do a good job at rectifying being a Jesuit school with Catholic ideals and making successful business students upon graduation? Absolutely. I get this question a lot, which I think is understandable um, because they do seem like two subjects like theology and business that would not go well together. Um, and I didn't really know what to expect coming into Boston College. Um, I knew spirituality is important to me and this was a subject I was interested in, but I wasn't really sure how integrated they would be. Um, and I realized week one that I was getting myself into a program that was just so comprehensive and so like ingrained in how to live out Jesuit values in the workforce. Um, I took all freshmen in the business school take a course called Portico. I like to say it's sort of a crash course to the business world and also business, asset, business ethics. And we took a field trip into the city on uh, Newbury Street, we went to Patagonia and just talked to them about sustainability in fast fashion. And I knew from that, I was like, okay, wait, this is a lot different from what I was expecting. We're gonna be talking about social issues in this class. We're gonna be talking about how to make ethical decisions, how being ethical starts when you're a student, it starts when you're young and being able to make the right choice on small things so that when you're in a position of power, you still make those good choices and you still 
um, look out for marginalized groups. I think it was phenomenal. I also took perspectives my freshman year and I remember how funny it was that in perspectives we'd be talking about ethical decision-making frameworks and in my business classes, we'd be talking about the same thing and the same thinkers and reading the same text, um, which I think just says a lot about the business school as a whole. Perfect, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Nazia, I want to ask, ask you this question. Um, you talked about being a Muslim student at Boston College and you know we hope that it's been an inclusive community. It's been one where you felt comfortable um, has that been the case? And have you felt as you as though you could explore and even strengthen your religious beliefs uh, at a place that like Boston College, which again ostensibly has a, a Catholic tradition throughout? Yes, yeah, interesting fact too is that um, before attending BC, I also went to a Catholic high school myself. So even though I had gone to a Catholic high school, I was still a little bit nervous about what Maybe like to go to BC because I never, you know, I, I wasn't sure how that would translate into a into a sorry campus, um, into a college community. Um, so I think it was helpful to have had a lot of like introduction to Catholicism back in high school. So that was easier for me in my theology courses. But nonetheless, I definitely feel like BC is so so welcoming to you know all students of different backgrounds. As I mentioned earlier, we have so many different clubs uh, dedicated to different faith clubs. Uh, sorry, dedicated different faiths on campus. We also have the multi faith center, which is really uh, a useful, um, you know, place to gather for different, um, you know, faith clubs um, for students to have like their prayers in. They can have many retreats in there, or just have club meetings um, to kind of reflect, you know, as a one religious community, which is really nice to have that uh, option. A lot of resources on campus available to students too. Also, we're in the holy month of Ramadan right now, which is when Muslims um, fast from uh, food and uh, water from sunrise to sunset. And BC has been so accommodating for that. They open, I don't, I don't live on campus personally, but for my friends who do live on campus, they open um, the, one of the dining halls at 3 a.m. for the pre-fast meal, which is really nice that, you know, BC uh, will, you know, go out of their way to really create like, um, nutritious meals for students and to really accommodate to whatever religious belief that people belong to on campus. So that's never been um, an issue. Like uh, I've always felt very, uh, you know, welcome to within campus, which has been really nice uh, to have those resources and to have BC make sure that, you know, all students can have places to reflect and to meet and also to, to pray, you know, according to what the religion, um, you know, calls them to. So it is really nice to have that um, option and to have these clubs and also retreats. I know that, um, uh, the our Muslim Association also has their own retreats too, which is nice um, as well. And also, we have a lot of different theology classes too, which is really encompassing different religions. For example, I took um, Islam and Christianity in dialogue, and that class is really nice. It also kind of helped we also reaffirm uh, my belief and you know my religion because I was able to kind of reflect even deeper my religion. And also, it was nice to see. It was also cool to see like um, other let's say Christian students in the class, you know, ask questions about it and like learn more about how connected the religions really are and that there's actually a lot more similarities and differences because we went over the, the different prophets between the religions and how they had very similar stories and it's just you know um they're kind of all grounded in the same you know values of you know loving you know your neighbors and like and, and service and reflection so it was really nice to make those connections and also uh you know reflect even deeper within my own faith and kind of reinforce you know you know who i am as a muslim and also um get to be more exposed to other religions which also helps to Kind of open your world's view and understand people's perspective even more when you learn their kind of their core beliefs which has been really important um feature um at boston college that i've really enjoyed and been a part of so that's been really great well i appreciate that answer thank you so much and um <clears throat> grace how about if i ask you the same question do you feel like your spirituality has been strengthened uh has it been challenged has it been deepened uh have you yet to get there uh in your time at bc yeah i think my experience is, um, I would say, very common for a college student who I grew up going to mass, I grew up going to Catholic school and coming to Boston College, I thought it would be more of the same and was sort of shocked to realize like, oh, it's a lot more individual now. It's not structured, it's not scheduled, it's on your own time, your own involvements that you choose to uh, join, your own masses that you choose to go to. So it definitely was difficult for a period of time coming in as a freshman um, not having that structure that I was used to. I also lived on Newton campus my freshman year and we have our own chapel on campus. And so I got into a routine of going there and talking to people and making friends at that chapel. I've also been very fortunate to be part of a club called Christian Life Community, which I think is just very, very Jesuit. Um, 
it's about 200 or so students, but we meet in small groups where you have discussion facilitated by upperclassmen. Um, and I just, I've been so grateful to have upperclassmen to kind of show me the ropes of spirituality as a college student, show me the ropes of having meaningful conversations with people, opening yourself up to different ideas that you may not have grown up around. Um, it's just been a really, really great experience, but definitely was rocky at first, um, but now it's, it's great. I always like to mention, I think it's funny, I go to the same mass every week at 11 p.m. on Sunday, which is very late. Um, and there's always like a room full of college kids there. I think it's said a lot that kids are still going out of their way to go to mass and make time for uh, religion on their own uh, schedule. Uh, thanks, Grace. <clears throat> um, Franny, one thing I know about your time at BC is, is that you did some work in campus ministry and you're somewhat familiar with the resources. Can you, I mean, I, you don't have to go through the whole index, but in terms of, of people, and programs that haven't come up in our discussion yet. Um, talk a little bit about the resource of campus ministry at BC. Yeah, uh, campus ministry became one of my favorite spots on campus. I was a little, even though I did for Boston, the actual office and like realizing that the campus ministers were such a great resource for anything and everything happened later on. And I think something that we had have not mentioned yet fully is retreats and retreat culture on campus is huge whether it's out of first year experience with 48 hours out of the center for student formation of half time for students who are halfway through their boston college career or kairos which is a really huge um, retreat that's run out of campus ministry and it's really all about giving students a chance to go away for the weekend and kind of uh you could say like it's lovey-dovey, but it's 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 realizing that you have a support system, that people are there for you and people love you. And that's existent on this campus and beyond. Um, but yeah, the campus ministers are phenomenal. And I think I found out that most in front of me was when we were asked to leave last year for the pandemic. Whereas a lot of offices on campus were offering their support to students. I felt like campus ministry was the one where a lot of students were going to really unpack what was going on. They opened their office doors, stopped all the work that they were doing, which now in hindsight might not have been the best thing to do. But in that time, like we needed that emotional support. Um, there's a wonderful multi-faith um, campus minister, um, Reverend James Harrison, who I believe is the um, overseer of, um, clubs and organizations like the Muslim Student Organization. Naziha, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Halal and some other groups on campus. And um, Appalachia was mentioned. Arupe is another great service immersion um, program on campus where students actually uh, leave the country for over Christmas break. Um, yeah, I could go on and on. All around campus ministers are a great resource and they have a number of programs out of their office that aids in student formation and self-discovery. And and I turn to you, Christine, when it comes to things like Kairos or halftime or 48 hours or Appalachia volunteers or uh, the Arupe International Service Programs, Jamaica Magis, like like are is it just the four of you nerds that want to do these things or is like and I should say five because I've done Kairos and I've done <laughs> Jamaica and I've done all these things too. But is it just the five of us nerds that like this, or is there like, like, like do 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 like a lot of people at Boston College want to do these things? Is there a lot of buy-in for retreats for service? Again, where I might be just talking to the four people wired that way. But Christine, if you think that you're popular and you have friends that are outside of this Zoom call, like. It is this widespread around campus that things like Kairos are, are really popular? Yeah, oh, most definitely, Chris. I mean, you are speaking to like four big, or well, I could, we'll count you in it, five, two, like all of us are big into the spirituality. That's why we're here. That's why we're on this Zoom, but it is not limited to these five people on the Zoom call. I can tell you that much. Um, speaking to the Kairos program, which is something that I'm heavily involved in here on campus, uh, we run the largest Kairos program in the nation. Um, it actually operates on a lottery system. So students will put their name into this lottery 
and then be what we say called to kairos. Kairos is a word that means God's time. Um, the retreat uses God's lang God language, but obviously any um, you know higher power, any sort of spirituality like um, or religious identity is invited to partake in this retreat as well. Uh, and some students go all four years without being called on Kairos. It really comes at any time of actually seeing the lottery happen before. They quite literally press a button on a computer and it generates the list of names. And it's like magic. It's the most wonderful thing ever. Um, I love to plug Kairos because I can't really tell you a lot about it. For those who aren't familiar with it, it's kind of shrouded in secrecy. Um, and it's something a, a really, really important experience for a lot of students on this campus, a time to be vulnerable with one another and realize that we're all human beings, all kind of going through the same thing. Um, and while we come from different experiences, it's in this like kind of safe space that we're able to bring those to the forefront of who we are and, and share in those experiences. I know for me, I led Kairos in, um, in October this past fall, and I was able to connect with Muslim students who were in my small group. And so much so that I was then invited to a Muslim student association meeting. So me as a white Catholic girl at a Muslim student association meeting, having a very, very minimum knowledge about the Muslim faith through the Kairos program was then to expand my faith knowledge and um, kind of and then grow in community with these people as well. So no, it is definitely not limited to the people on this screen. The whole campus gets involved in these retreat programs as well as I should also plug too for, um, obviously our, the people watching are gonna be freshmen. 48 hours is a super important retreat. It's not run out of campus ministry directly. It's like the Office of First Year Experience, I believe runs 48 hours, but it's just that. 48 hours away from campus, they actually put you up in a nice hotel on Cape Cod, a beachfront hotel, um, where you get to take a step back and reflect on your experience as a first year student. You know, Talk about the struggle of trying to find somebody like to sit with at, at meal time or walking into office hours with a professor or being like, I'm away from home and I don't know what I'm majoring in and I have no friends. Like, and it's that kind of space to bring those things to the forefront too. So those are two huge retreat programs here at BC that are super important to student life. And it's not just us. That's good to know. That's good to know. Um, I know inevitably people ask me when we talk about the Jesuit nature of Boston College is, have you ever been taught by a Jesuit? Have any of you had a Jesuit in the classroom? Uh, Christine, you're saying yes. Uh, can you elaborate? Yeah, I actually, um, my first semester of my freshman year, I took a freshman topic seminar. So it was just a one credit pass or fail course with the Dean of Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences, Father Greg Kalsher. So he's kind of the big guy. Um, and there were six of us in there in this very well, it, ornate. It, I'll do respect. There's a bigger guy as far as Father Kalsher <laughs> yeah. is concerned. That's true. That's true. He's a pretty big guy at BC. Yeah, he's a pretty big guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, and I use that word because the man would bring out scones before we would begin oh. class. Um, and so we were met in this like very fancy conference room, but he was the most chill guy ever. Um, and we talked about social justice and, um, issues on a very real level. Um, and while he was wearing the white collar, it didn't really necessarily feel like that. Um, we were able to develop relationships with him. I'm, I'm still able to connect with him and walk into his office hours and stuff like that, which is awesome. Great, great, good stuff. Um, you know, Franny, now that you've kind of been there and done that, and you're taking your victory lap in graduate school this year and next, I suppose, um, did did the Jesuit four years undergraduate deliver what you thought it would? Or was it very different than you thought it was gonna be when you were thinking about this as a senior in high school? Yeah, so it's it's really interesting because I don't know that I had much expectation when coming in. Um, honestly, like my mom had suggested that I go to Boston College because of the Catholic Jesuit identity. And I was just like, okay, you know? Um, and so in that sense, absolutely like blew me out of the water and even more so um, in learning to integrate these things into my own life and learning to, to uh, practice my own voice and what do these big social justice issues mean to me you know i think a lot of people come into boston college thinking that they're going to do one thing so i came in as like a biology major thinking that i was going to be pre-med and found out very fast that that just was not for me and i think bc created so many good spaces for me specifically campus ministry um and some other hot spots on campus centered around student formation that was like okay hold up you're a freshman you're 18 years old 
let's really think about if you want to do this or not. And so I was one of those people that switched. And I think for anyone out there who thinks that they want know what they want to do, that's amazing. But also come in with an open mind, knowing that halfway through your career, you might actually change. So in the end, I became an applied psychology and human development major in Lynch School and didn't take like a total turn away from medicine because to some degree, I'd still love to work in a hospital just in a, a different capacity. Um, and I think in that way and relating it back to spirituality too, I think you can have many different definitions of spirituality, but I think one of them is knowing yourself a little bit better. And I think BC does a really great job of allowing students space to ask questions. And I think Grace mentioned, Car no, Grace or Christine mentioned Carrie Cronin. I can't remember who, I think it was Christine, now that she's shaking her head. And Carrie Cronin always says that like, if you leave Boston College with more answers than questions, then BC has failed you. And honestly, like being in grad school now, I think I have way more questions than I ever did as an undergraduate. And I think that means that Boston College did its job. So we're gonna finish like this. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna ask you, Naziha, for those people out there that aren't necessarily religious or come from a, um, a Catholic or Christian background, what would you say to them to make, to, to make them understand what our culture, what our community is like and how this can be inclusive for them? Yeah, I'd say everyone can kind of really um, resonate with the Jesuit values, whether you're religious or Christian, not Christian at all. It's just in the, it's ingrained in our culture just to be again, men and women for others. Like service is very big as, as my, um, you know, co-panelists talked about service is very big at BC, the students, you know, they, they don't have to do service, but they really want to do it, which is kind of shows how dedicated students are at Boston College. So there really is something for everyone at BC. Everyone can find their home within our 300 plus clubs and organizations within, you know, campus ministry that is dedicated to giving resources to students of all different, you know, religious backgrounds, all different religious spectrums, which is really helpful to have something for everyone too. So I think that um, definitely don't be, you know, afraid of, you know, will I be, you know, welcomed if I'm not, you know, Christian or Catholic or if I'm not religious at all. But no, that's not the case at all because BC, um, you know, uh, is really an engaging community for, you know, all students of diverse backgrounds. Um, it really, um, they want to, I find a lot of times that a lot of students like from different backgrounds, they want to learn more about what your background is. They're just, they're really curious about learning more about, you know, other, uh, you know, your religion and backgrounds, which is really helpful to have that, you know, really engaged, um, passionate, driven, uh, service driven community that really, you know, makes BC special. Because I feel like, you know, the best part of Boston College is the people. The people here, you know, are so unique. Um, and the community is unlike any other feeling that I've ever had, um, which is why that, that really drew me to Boston College when I was looking to transfer to school, transfer schools, because I didn't have that community feeling or campus feeling at all in my old school. And I knew that BC had it with the dedicated faculty and staff and just, um, the amazing uh, uh, students as well that are just passionate uh, and driven and, and service is a really big part of it in that reflection. So I think that's really helped. Um, the Desert Vows have really enha enhanced my experience at BC, even, you know, not being a Christian myself, I can really still um, take part in it and, you know, reflect and, and take part in services, which has been really beneficial part of my time at, at Boston College for sure. Thank you. And, and Grace, I'll let you get the last word. Uh, you represent a, a portion of people that, you know, are Christian, are Catholic, maybe some of you went to a Catholic high school. How is this just not a lot of the old same thing and just all reliable? How can this be different, exciting, better than what they had uh, back at home or something maybe that they're not expecting from a Catholic, you know, uh, university compared to, again, where they're coming from, either from a Catholic high school or from a public high school, but maybe from a Catholic tradition. How can this be exciting and interesting for, for them? I think it'd be exciting when you make it exciting. You can reach out and explore those options to engage in challenging conversations and to expose yourself to new ideas that maybe you weren't familiar with. Um, I think because of just the um, diverse religious groups on campus, you're able to take, speak to people with different religious backgrounds and kind of incorporate beliefs into your own spirituality and learn more about yourself in the process. And um, I think you get a little bit closer. I think faith is just getting closer and closer to the truth. You never, in my opinion, you never really get there, but it's the belief that it's out there. Um, and I think at Boston College, when you expose yourself to even more ideas from so many different backgrounds, you get just a little bit closer. So 
to answer your question, I think it's exciting because you make it exciting. Um, the opportunities are here at BC. It's when you get here and you step on campus, it's your job to kind of seek them out and to take advantage of them because it really does enrich your time at BC and your spirituality. I mean, what wisdom and depth from the four panelists tonight. It's very impressive. I mean, I feel as though, you know, I just got a master class lesson in spirituality from you four. It was very impressive. And it's all from the heart, which I think uh, we've come to, like, when we talk about Boston College and we speak from the heart, we're so used to that. And I hope all of you that are viewing kind of see where we're coming from. The community sometimes forces us to speak from the heart. It's kind of what we're expected to do and what we're taught to do. And I think our panelists did a great job at describing that part of their life at BC, which we appreciate. Um, all the panelists also put their email addresses in the camera box there. And um, I'm sure that, that it's no problem to welcome more of the conversation, let it continue. Uh, you know, we're, we're here to help. Um, for many of you, you just have a few days to make a decision. It's not the biggest decision you'll ever make in your life. You'll make bigger decisions, but this decision is important. And it revolves some inflect, reflection and gathering some information and you wanna make the right decision. Uh, so if we can help, we're here to do it. So thanks for tuning in. There's a couple more of these programs throughout the month. Uh, we posted all the ones that we've done already in April on the admissions portal. So there's a lot of information for you to chew on if you need more information about BC. As far as spirituality, reflections, uh, reflecting on retreats. Uh, these guys did a great job and um, I appreciate their time tonight. Thanks for tuning in everyone. Good luck with your decision. Thanks for your interest in Boston College. We'll see you soon. Thanks guys, did a great job.